Greetings, people of the internet. This is Scott with CircWorks Art Labs. Welcome once again to the underground lair where we create what? Robots, aliens, zombies, and other imminent threats to humanity. Yes, and we are going to check out some threats to humanity, my friends. But not threats that I've created or we've created here at CircWorks Labs, but stuff that has inspired CircWorks to create the things that we do. Uh, one person in particular was really an inspiration, and that's the person we're going to kind of focus on today. And that person is named Guillermo del Toro. Maybe you've heard of him. Awesome filmmaker and awesome artist in his own right. Just an all-around creative mastermind. And uh, we're going to take a look at some of his personal collection, things that, that inspired him. So this is going to go well way back not just me so it's like it's gonna go I mean the the inspirations and the things that you're gonna see are gonna go back I don't know turn of the century type stuff probably illustration um, design filmmaking all that cool stuff um, this is this is really gonna be an amazing thing but to do that We've got it. We can't do that from here in the lab because, you know, I'm stuck down here. I can't really, I don't get out much, you know. So the only way I can do that is through the magic or the technology that is the parallelescope. And maybe you've seen that before. But it allows us to view parallel universes, alternate realities. So I can see an alternate reality with this device of myself who is out and about and can go to places like sunny California, visit friends and go check out cool things like this Del Toro exhibit. So we're gonna do it, but first we have to go to the Parallelescope and check it out. So let's go to it. All right, so I am in vacation in California. I'm about to drive out to LA today to meet with a friend and uh, we're gonna check out the uh, Los Angeles County Museum of Art. I believe that's what it is. And they've got a really cool, well, I assume it's really cool, but a Guillermo del Toro exhibit and there's some other cool exhibits there. So looking forward to that. So I'm gonna hit the road. Let's see what it's all about. So I'm here at the La Brea Tar Pits and look where I dug up this old fossil. Hey, it's Kevin Cross from KevinCross.net. Sure. Yeah, .net, okay. <laughs> and 100 Days of Making Comics and MonkeyMod.com. Yes. All right. Guy, if you, if you like walk around, I think he'll follow you, just like uh, Haunted Mansion. <laughs> no, not quite. Oh. oh, yeah, he is. Okay. He's totally following me. All right, so we're here with Kevin Cross. We are in line to see the Guillermo del Toro exhibit at Maybe. Wackman, maybe. Yeah, this line is like... I don't, you can't probably see it, but it is like long. Um, so hopefully we get in because I've only got what another three hours. I don't know what time it hopefully. is. Yeah. So I really want to see it. We went to have lunch. We thought the line would die down. We were wrong. So uh, anyway, um, are you a fan of Guillermo del Toro? Yeah. What's your favorite del Toro film? You know, a lot of his earlier stuff. Um, and I'll watch movies and I'll love them and then I'll like forget about them. But I really like Devil's Backbone. Of course, I like Pacific Rim, even though it's flawed. But I just love big robots and monsters. So. Yeah, I haven't seen Crimson Peak yet. I haven't seen that yet. Um, but uh, yeah, I just visually anything anything he does looks awesome. So hopefully they'll let us take some some footage when we get inside. Yeah, I hope so. Um, I, they said they let you take take some video, but I don't know where or what specific exhibits. But yeah, I'm only here to vlog. Yeah. So <laughs> all right, all right, tickets acquired. So we have entered the lobby of LACMA, and little do we know, there is another long line awaiting us. And now I know what it feels like to be inside a pasta maker. All right, we were waiting over there, and now we're waiting over here. We already got our tickets, and now there's another big ass line. <laughs> this thing wraps all around in the corner. Do you think you're gonna be waiting in all these lines today? Whose idea was this anyway? <laughs> I don't know. Somebody, um, <laughs> something that rhymes with circ works. <laughs> you know, I remember somebody said that, that, yeah, I want to go to that too. So, so I'm not entirely. Okay, so here we are at the entrance of the Guillermo del Toro exhibit at LACMA. We walk in and who's there to greet us but the angel of death from Hellboy 2. And of course, these pictures really don't do it much justice. I mean, the detail in these sculptures are just incredible. As you can see here with the pale man from Pan's Labyrinth. I kind of wish he had the pose where he had his hands in front of his eyes, but yeah, I guess you kind of want to see his face. And here you can see some of the actual early concept sketch of the pale man. A little bit different. And here is Hans from Freaks and 
this is, well, here's what's scary. So this stuff is actually in uh, Del Toro's personal collection in his house. So imagine getting up, getting a drink of water, and having that little guy standing in front of you with a straight razor. Uh, so here is actually one of uh, Del Toro's sketchbooks, and you can kind of flip through it. The original one was there, but then they've got all the pages scanned in, so you can flip through it. I wish I, wish I could speak Spanish. Nosferatu, awesome Nosferatu bust, and he's got all these really cool, just little curiosities. And I'm not sure exactly what they're all from, but they are really, really amazing to look at. Uh, just incredible collection. Here's some more Nosferatu vampire sculpts. Look at those. Wow. <laughs> All this stuff is just amazing. So here from, uh, I think this is from Blake's 2, it's the Reaper uh, Vampire. And some original Mike Mignola sketches. I think these are concept drawings for Hellboy or Hellboy 2. Um, so I guess he was actually, in, in addition to creating Hellboy, did some concept sketches for the movie and everything. Really cool stuff. Um, yeah, look at this. These are, that's not Mignola, that's somebody else. But, um, so more like actual life-size sculptures uh, from Freaks. And the detail in these things are so amazing, right down to the hairs on the arms. I mean, it looks, you look right at it, it looks real. Yeah, okay, an original H.R. Giger, amazing. So I've never seen one of these up close. I'm a big fan, but um, my brother actually went to Switzerland, and there's an H.R. Giger museum there, and I, like it's actually there's a bar in it, and all the bar stools are shaped with that kind of organic look that he's famous for. But So that's the first time I've seen one. Um, here are some hellhounds from Hellboy, um, some of the original uh, concept sketches. And these just uh, you, these just blow me away. Just looking at them, I mean, it's so inspiring. I, I went I, I, when I was in line. I was drawing some sketches, <laughs> just cause wasting time. And I, I think I I may have thrown them out after seeing this stuff. It's just so amazing. Abe Sapien. And here here's some. Uh, there's not a whole lot of Pacific Rim stuff, but here's a few little maquettes. Um, and then he's got all these crazy like curios and things. And I don't know if these are from a specific movie or what. Um, but so here's kind of that clockwork uh, Nazi guy from from uh, from Hellboy, and again, I don't, I'm not sure what that's from, but just all these weird things, and these are all in this house. So look at this. So this lady, so she very realistic, but she looks just like a normal, you know, normal woman until you kind of pan around, and then. It's pretty grotesque. She's got all these little nodules and things growing out of her. It's just, it's, it's kind of <laughs> that weird dichotomy of beauty and the beast. Um, so here are some life-size uh, f figures from Bride of Frankenstein. And I never realized that the Bride of Frankenstein's hair was red because um, the movie's in black and white. So that's just weird. That's something, you learn something new every day. So this, it looks like a mad scientist, but it's the makeup uh, artist applying the makeup to Boris Karloff, of course, sipping some tea. Uh, and then here is a Boris Karloff life sketch, or life sketch, life sculpt. And, oh wow, look at this. So Frankenstein, from the, if you've ever seen the Bernie Wrightston Frankenstein adaption, um, these are actual original pages from that book, and he's, Del Toro has tons of them, and tons of the, the best, best ones, so, I mean, this is just amazing when you have that kind of money just to, you know, get all this stuff, I mean, look at the detail in this, if you've never seen this book, um, I don't have a copy myself, I think I'm going to need to get one, because it's just amazing, and I think this is the version that he was going to adapt. He wanted to adapt Frankenstein, so I hope he hope he still does that. But I think they're I think Universal is doing some crossover thing where they're going to try to do their Avengers with Universal monsters, and that kind of makes me nervous. But I hope I hope we get to see a Del Toro version of Frankenstein, and it would be cool to see um, maybe if this was this was the version that he adapted, because I mean really look at this. Isn't that amazing? Look at all the cross hashing and the detail and just. The lighting and oh man, it's amazing. But this is you know that's the iconic uh, Boris Karloff Frankenstein. This thing is huge, and that again is in his house. It's like six feet tall. If you've ever seen Devil's Backbone, one of the coolest ghosts you'll ever see. Now there's actually some effects there, um, like visual effects that you can't see in there, which is a shame because it was really cool. Um, more uh, Mignola uh, concept drawings uh, for Hellboy. Or maybe they're not, I don't know if they're constant, they're just Hellboy drawings, maybe just for, for the comic book itself. So this is from either Eerie or Creepy Magazine. Uh, Kevin could probably tell you, he'll probably go into a little more detail on that. Um, uh, and there's an R. Crumb original drawing. 
he's just got so much original like comic book artwork and things like that as you can see here um, uh, Will Eisner's Spirit original page um, and here's some you know famous comic book covers of course the movie Monsters um, I imagine he has a, probably a lot of the original paintings from these I know he's got one we'll see in a minute um, there it is the Metal Luna Mon or Mutant I was going to say Monster the Metal Luna Mutant from, uh, from classic horror movie Ray Harryhausen one of my personal like favorite special effects guys it's just so cool um, and he of course he created or he did the effects on Jason the Argonauts which you see there that's from Mask of the Phantasm uh, just all this up the crack and again Harry Housen did that um, uh, just he's stop-motion God he's done everything I believe this is Peter Cushing uh, probably from a hammer Frankenstein or Dracula I'm not quite sure I don't remember uh, more Hellboy kind of maquettes and uh, props and things like that. Very cool. I think that's from Hellboy 2. Uh, Dick Smith who did the effects. That's a huge bust, but he did the effects on like the uh, Exorcist. There's Gertie. Uh, that's from the, like the first animated. So now we're getting into more animation stuff. Um, Pinocchio and again I think uh, Kevin's gonna talk about some of this footage on his channel when he does his video because um, he's got a lot to say about this but look at that amazing from Sleeping Beauty but I did want to talk about this so you may recognize this from the Haunted Mansion in Disneyland I was listening to the a Nerdist episode with Paul Dini and Paul was talking about how a friend of his was bidding on one of those giant paintings when you go down the elevator and everything um, that kind of stretch and he said there was only other one other bidder, but it was Guillermo del Toro. And, and I guess Paul Dini said, well, tell Guillermo to enjoy his painting. So there's a pretty good chance that del Toro also owns those paintings from the elevator in, in Haunted Mansion. Uh, oh, look at this. So more Hellboy props. That's that, that mecha glove from, uh, I don't know if it's Hellboy or Hellboy 2. The, the big baby shotgun. Very cool. <laughs> so, and of course, the... Of course, Hellboy's iconic, uh, you know, trench coat, leather trench coat. Now look at some, these shotgun shells are like huge. You've got all these little props, everything down, a little crucifix here. Um, again, that's I think that's the Good Samaritan again, and the face mask from the that clockwork uh, Nazi guy. I don't know his name. This is from Pacific Rim. These are the little bug creatures that scurry around. And, uh, and there's some just odd stuff like the time machine, H.G. Wells time machine. This is that thing from Ripley's Believe It or Not, the, the thing where they took a monkey and put a fish and called it a mermaid. Uh, this is a maquette or like a little prop from uh, probably a concept thing from Pirates of the Caribbean. And look at this creepy skull. It's like a skull within a skull. And this is like a, a bust of a composer, Chopin, I think. But look at that. He's got like a skeleton and it's kind of all wired and stuff. First I thought that was like an animatronic thing, but I think it's just a crazy looking prop. Um, so here is an original Drew Struzan piece. Now I've, I've never seen an actual Struzan up close. Um, pretty amazing. And I've never seen this painting even even like in print. Um, but this is from Pan's Labyrinth. Um, but it, just, it was just really cool to go in and look at the detail and, and just see how, how he illustrates a painting. Really cool. Just a lot of cool, a lot of cool illustrations. Um, here another Arthur Rackham illustration. Look at that. Isn't that amazing? It's, it's just really cool to see some of these artists that you're familiar with and go look at what they're actually doing. H.P. Lovecraft, um, Tooth Fairy, I forgot what the, I think it's from Hellboy 2. Um, really cool. Just, I oh mean, I love this stuff. It's just, just the detail and stuff in here. Um, this is from Pacific Rim. This is one of the little, I don't know if these were called Jaeger suits or whatever. I guess they're the suits you put on before you go into the, in the giant Jaegers and everything. Um, the Pan's Labyrinth creature. Look at that. Now this, I mean, I'll kind of pan down and show you all the detail and stuff, but um, you know, this is kind of before, I think when they modeled Grim for the movie, they probably got a lot from this, because look at that. It's so amazing. But that's, you know, that's pretty much it. <laughs> this is so awesome. So we just got out of the Guillermo del Toro exhibit, and well, so so uh, Kevin, how many hours do you think we waited in line in various lines today? Uh, let's see. I was trying to meet you at one. We finally parked by two. We got in through the whole. The whole process probably took about three hours. Probably from getting our tickets to. We went in one line. First, we waited in line forever to find parking. Then we went in one line to get our tickets to the museum. Then we had another ticket. 
that took us to the Guillermo uh, exhibit, yeah, which was that was a huge line. <laughs> but here's the question: so all that waiting in line, was it worth it? Yes. 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 It, it was awesome. I bought the book, so I'm going to check this out. I'm probably going to come back and buy the book. Uh, it's well, it's August right now. This is open till November, and I got the benefit of living very close, so I'm definitely coming back. Yeah, it was awesome. So uh, you guys, are I would say we got tons of footage, but you guys have probably seen this if you're, depending on how we edit this. So awesome, good show, good coming out here to see Kevin, and uh, hopefully we'll get back and we'll hang out again sometime. Yeah, we gotta yeah. get boozy next time. Yeah, yeah definitely. <laughs> All right, later. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, another journey through the Parallelescope. And you know what? I get so envious of my alternate reality self. Gets to go out to California, hang at the beach, visit friends, go to exhibits, hang out with Kevin Cross. But, you know, I'm stuck here, you know, such as the life of a mad scientist slash artist, you know. But it just it just goes to show you, you really do, you know, if you can, you got to get out of that desk. Get out from behind the desk, go out, uh, go to some art exhibits, go check out some culture. And, uh, you know, just explore life and uh with that i gotta get back to work but i'll see you guys later that is all